ಸಹನಾಂಬುಜ ಪೂಜಿ ಸುರನರೋತ್ತಮೈರ್ಮುದ ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಶ್ರೀ ಘನಶ್ಯಾಮ ಮಹಾರಾಜನೀ ಜಯ ಓಲ್ ಮೈಟಿ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಓಡ್ ಬಿಲವ್ಡ್ ಘನಶ್ಯಾಮ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಪಾತ್ಮಿಕ ಚೋರ್ ಲಿಬರೇಷನ್ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಪಾತ್ ಗುರುಜಿ ಐಮ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯುಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಜೈ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ ಟುಡೇ ನಿಸ್ ಗುರುನಾನಂದ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬ್ ಅ ಸಮ್ ಅದರ್ ಇನ್ಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಸೆಂಟ್ರಲ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಟುಡೇ ಒನ್ ಇನ್ಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಟೋಟಲಿ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ವೈ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಎಟ್ ದ ಟೈಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದೇಜ್ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ್ ಮ್ಯಾನಿ ಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ಕಮ್ ಟು ಅ ಡಿವೋಟಿ ಟು ಟೇಕ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಹಿಸ್ ಅಕ್ಷರಧಾಮ್ ಬಟ್ ಟುಡೇ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಟೋಟಲಿ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ ವೈ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇನ್ಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ರಿಲೇಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಎನಿ ಡಿವೋಟಿ ಇವನ್ ಅ ನನ್ ಬಿಲೀವರ್ ಹೌ ಹಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಬಿ ರೀಚ್ ಅಪ್ ಟು ದ ಡಿವೈನ್ ಅಕ್ಷರಧಾಮ್ ಲೆಟ್ ವಿ ಸೀನ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ದ ಒನ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಟು ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಆಫ್ ಭಕ್ತ ಚಿಂತಾಮಣಿ ಖಾನ ದೇ ಸಬುರನ್ ಪೂರ ಮಾ ವಸೆ ಹರಿ ಜನ ಜೇಹ ಸಹಾಯ ಕರಿ ಜನಿ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಕಹು ಸಾಂಬಡ ಜೊ ಹವೆ ತೇಹ ವಿಪ್ರ ಏಕ ದೀವಾನ ದಾದೊ ಸತ ಸಂಗೀ ನಿ ಸೋಯ ಜಾನೆ ಅಜಾನೆ ಜಮಾಡಿಯ ಸಂತ ತೆ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನೋಯ ದಾಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಬಿಗ್ ಸಿಟಿ ಇನ್ ದ ಸೆಂಟ್ರಲ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಈವನ್ ಟುಡೆ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಸಿಟಿ ಬುರಾನ್ಪುರ್ ಇಸ್ ಸಿಚುಯೇಟೆಡ್ ಎಟ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಇನ್ ಇನ್ ದಟ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ದಾಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ನೋ ಸಚ್ ಸಂಗ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ but after spreading satsang throughout the gujarat santo meaning a non santo they also travel outside from the gujarat by the command of maharaj this santo has made too much struggle for spreading satsang because there were no one who know this some know about the sampradaya or santo or their rules and regulations and still santo have to follow their their own religious vows and they have to spread the satsang and that's why they have to tolerate many many things even they have many hardships still only to follow maharaj's command as well as to please him they suffer and tolerated many many kinds of pain and insults and everything just as pujya guru ji have to suffer and tolerated many kinds of pain and some adverse situations as well as some many kinds of insults everything here in us when he was uh he was just trying to spread bhagwan swami narayan's message in a indian family in usa in early 1993 1994 5 6 7 at the time till the 2000 puja guru ji had to suffer and he had to tolerate many many kinds of insults as well as uh very tough situations in which he had sometimes not even a duty is house to live in or if a duty her if a duty is house is ready to stay inside then the guru ji have to stay in in a unfinished basement 
even in a winter there were no heating nothing that even in such situation puja guruji stay there for not week not a month but for two to four months in such situation puja guruji had spread this loyadam movement this loyadam satsang in us so in here for spreading satsang in buranpur our nansanto had made too much effort to spread the satsang there was one divan meaning a administrative head of the state he was also living in the state uh, living in buranpur and his name was dado so this dado divan he was from brahmin caste but he was not a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan even he did not know anything about bhagwan but as a brahmin he had something uh some kind of religiousness in his heart but not in his behavior he totally uh different or he is totally opposed of the religion how he n- did not follow even a single rules and regulations prescribed even in any other hindu scriptures not prescribed only in swamin and sampradaya but some general rules and regulations for the hindus he did not follow it now as a brahmin and as a wealthy person he had set a uh, arm house just as puja guru ji had started arm house in a uh, vadodara for the poor and uh, needy persons in that uh, arm house the devotees served the f- food meaning a prasad of maharaj to all those who were poor and beggars and who really need and those who have not even money for eating or earning anything so in this way this dada divan even his behavior is not proper still he had set an arm house for santo mahanto and sanyasi meaning uh, he had set this arm house not for poor or beggars but for some santos or some uh renunciants meaning a sanyasi or bavas and everybody who come to the place of this dada divan he had sent an order to his man that whoever come here whoever the renunciant meaning a sadhu bava or whoever you have to feed them but once upon a time bhagwan swami and his two santo they reached there at the home of dada divan they were actually not went there to eat anything but santo went there to preach something about bhagwan swami and to the people but as dada divan's men they gave something or meaning a uh, ready to eat foods as well as they also gave some uncooked food stuffs to the all santo and bavas and everybody so these two santo as they reached there they also get some uncooked food stuff from these dada divans men now after coming back to their resident the these two santo they cook the food for themselves and offer it to maharaj and after offering it to maharaj they eat some prasad now this uh, only this much merit dada divan has one after one days and months and years passed after many times this dada divan he fell ill 
and his death is sure because his disease is uncurable now after his final moment is came there jamdus the attendants of the death guard the jamraj they came to take dada divan sol into jampuri why because he had not uh on any kinds of merit throughout his life he never bow down to santo or even bhagwan even after getting birth from a brahmin caste still he never perform any pious or ritualistic per, uh, performance or deed and instead he always perform many many kinds of sins he never follow even a single commands of maharaj or any other rules prescribing any other scriptures and that's why this attendance of jam meaning jamdus they came there to take the soul of this dada divan into jampuri now dada divan he saw this jamdus and as we know this is a very tough situation when one have a one have a vision that one can see the jamduts because this is more horrifying that one can have a fear of horror or one can experience some horror situation now that the as he fear after watching this jamdut he had a fear and that's why he prayed to all those bawas and all those sanyasis he was one after one remember that i have failed throughout my life this much bawas and sanyasi so they may help me at this time i really need help but who will come there because he had feel all those bawas and sanyasis they were fat they only covered their bodies with the saffron clothes but they were not a uh, proper sant then even they did not follow bhagwan's commands but as the other divan remember one after one all those santos and bawas and sanyasis still he had not seen bhagwan swami and santo because when bhagwan swami and his two santo they came there to am house at the time the other divan was not there only his men they gave some food stuff to the santo and that's why the other divan have no remembrance or no any idea about bhagwan swami and santo and that's why dada divan have given up his trust in all those bawas and sanyasis and finally he decided that now my death is sure this jamdut they will they'll take me into jamdut uh, jampuri and i have to suffer lots but bhagwan swami and both the santo they appear there in front of this jamdut dada divan he realized who these two santos were then these two santo they explained to this jamdut the attendants of the yamraj the death god that we are santo of bhagwan swami narayan and as we ate some food of this dada divan so you cannot even touch dada divan's body then dada divan listen this conversation between these two santos and jamdut then jamdut say no we have an order from the death god jamraj that uh, and we have to follow his command so we have to do our duty we do not understand anything else we have only one duty to follow our king our master's command and that's why we are here 
संतों से नो यू कैन नॉट टच इवन दादा दीवान वाई बिकॉज वी एट हीज फूड दिस कन्वर्जेशन लिसन बाय दादा दीवान एंड दैट्स वाई ही अगेन एंड अगेन रिमेंबर दिस संतो एंड इवन ही लिसन फ्रॉम संतो दैट वी आर संतो ऑफ भगवान स्वामी नारायण दैट्स वाई दादा दीवान रियलाइज दैट समबडी बाय द नेम ऑफ स्वामी नारायण ही वॉज अ भगवान and that's why he also even he had a uh, very tough situation so he cannot speak the, uh, and he cannot even speak a single word that's why he only remember swami narayan swami narayan and in his mind he, he was chanting now jamdud stop and finally santo say if you can take this all now you can take then jamdus they how uh, some sense that this is a uh, bhagwan swami and santo so i cannot or we cannot oppose them that's why they all those jamdus they bow down to both of those santo and after full uh, 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 while ho- ho- folding their hands all those jamdus they requested santo santo we are not at fault and we are n- not even want to take this soul into jampuri but we have an order of our master the dead god that's why we have to follow our duty and if this is your soul if you want to take this soul into aksardham then first please this is our humble request to you please let we go there to jamraj first then santo said it's okay we are go there then santo this jamdoots and this dada diwan all those proceed towards the jampuri to meet the dead god on the other hand as this dada diwan he died after that after getting news of his death dada diwan's wife she also committed a suicide because at the time there was a, a tradition that a king or a, some some person who was a uh, higher in a position in the state if that person die then after that his wife had to commit a suicide or he had to burn down in into the fire in which this uh, dead body was given a fire so this dada diwan's wife she also committed suicide that's why jamdoots were ready for her and they took the soul of this uh, dada diwan's wife now all this group reach into jampuri there in the darbar of yamraj the dead god as the, uh, this dead god he saw these two santo of bhagwan swami and they were coming there he immediately got up from his seat and immediately he go forward to santo and there he bow down to santo and he welcome both the santo and even he offer his own seat to sit on to the santo santo finally sat there on the special seat of dharmaraj and after worshiping those santo dada diwan uh, this dead god he requested he prayed to santo why are you coming here it is my great fortune that i have darshan of you you are the great sant of bhagwan swaminarayan that's why then santo explained the situation 
the jamduts the attendants also explain to yamraj that this was, this is the situation then the dead guard the jamraj he opened the accounts of the of the dadiwan that how much merits he had and how much sins he had committed so the balance sheet is very very unbalanced why because he had throughout his life committed sins he had no any merits he had merits only one thing and that is to feed these two santos of bhagwan swami narayan now after examining this report of the whole life of this dada divan dev god say santo this is the report this is the truth that this dada divan is only suitable to this jamburi because he had committed sins throughout his life then santo said but he had fed us that's why as we ate his food that was his greatest merit then the dead god he requested santo santo you are the great that's why i cannot do anything to this soul but let we go to maharaj let we go to bhagwan swami and nirakshar dham he will give us some idea what to do with this dadas soul then all this group reach into aksardham there they all have darshan of maharaj after having darshan of maharaj maharaj asked them why are coming here then santo narrated the incident the deadgar also narrated the incident to maharaj and maharaj say yes as this uh, as my santo they ate the food given by this dada divan that's why he cannot be go there into jampuri as he had only this much merit and throughout the, uh, his life he had committed all the sins that's why first because of this merit he will be sent into swarg meaning uh in a heaven after enjoying the pleasures over there along with his wife both after many years they both will be sent into vaikunt the abar of an uh, the another abar of god after having there they both will be uh, given a birth as a human being on earth and after becoming my devotee they will get ultimate liberation and they finally again come in this aksardham this is what the final judgment by bhagwan swami narayan there there is no any other creator than maharaj and that's why they have to accept this uh, final judgment given by maharaj now all were agree the dev god he was also agree and he again bow down to maharaj all those muktos and this santo he say sorry for this inconveniency to santo and after coming back to his jamburi he released this both uh, dada divan and his wife and they both were sent into into the heaven they enjoy there too much uh, for many lives and after that they both were sent into vaikunt and after that going into vaikunt after many years they both according to maharaj vis they both came down on earth as human being and after getting a company and association of santo and some other devotees they both become a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan after following each and every commands of maharaj they both after the death reach into aksardham 
so this incident teaches that even though a person who had committed some kind of sins but if Bhagwan Swami and Santo they decided that even though he had committed sins but we want to take this soul into Aksardham then they can do it so this is the power remain in the hands of Bhagwan Swaminarayan's Ekantik son like our Pujya Guruji. In the next incident, Sadhguru Niskunan and Swami describe the another incident and more than that, this incident, Niskunan and Swami written here that I have myself witnessed this incident in a Samadhi and those who ever have a status acquire of this Samadhi they have also witnessed this incident. They have listened all this conversation between this Dado Diwan and Jamduts and Jamduts and Jamduts with Santos and with Maharaj. They all have listened this conversation and they witnessed this incident. Because this incident not happen on this earth. This incident happened in a divine bar of Maharaj and in a Jampuri, so one who has divine vision, only those can see this incident. Now after this incident, the another incident happened in the same Buranpur. There uh, there were three brothers. One is Samji, second is Pitambar and the third one is Sobaram. These three brothers, they were also living in the same city of Buranpur. But the problem is there. Only out of three, only two were the devotees of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. And Sobharam, he was not a devotee. Not only he was not a devotee, but he totally against of our satsang. And that's why many times when these Shamji and Pitambar they went into the Sabha after coming back from satsang when Samji and Pitambar came back to their home then this Sobaram he asked them why are you going there into satsang in this way even he beat them this both satsangi Samji and Pitambar they tolerated pain from Sobaram Sobaram was totally un, uh, totally non-believer and he had animity towards Bhagwan Swaminar and his santo. Why? Because he want to enjoy, uh, uh, enjoy all kinds of pleasure of this world. He want to eat meat, he want to drink. In this way, he d did not want to walk on the perfect and a good path of religion. That's why he opposed Bhagwan Swaminarayan and our satsang. Now once upon a time our santo reached there in the same place. So this Samji and Pitambar they went into Sabha and they listened Santo's Katha. Now at the same time Sobaram was also he was also there. He remained present because of Samji and Pitambar. They both convinced Sobaram to come to meet Santo. And that's why Sobaram also there in the Sabha. So Santo preached in the in their lectures many many good things. And Santo also preached that we should do that, we should do this and not that. In this way, what to do, what not to do, Santo preach in uh, preach to the public. So Baram had no belief in the religion, and that's why he denied to accept all those do's and don'ts. What happened after completing katha, after discourses is over? Then Pitam, uh, Samji and Pitamba they both come near to Santo, and they introduced this Sobaram as his brother and they also 
talked to Santo that my brother is totally against of satsang. He was not a devotee. Then Santo got a point and they explained Sobaram not to commit any kind of sins. And Sobaram, as he had animated for our satsang, he became anger and he said, No, you are false. Your talks also false. I don't believe in such kind of things. What merits and sins and what what is this thing? What hell hell and hell and what is this nonsense things? So so Baram said I don't believe in such kind of things. Then Santo said it's okay. Then Santo explained him the pain given to such kind of soul into Jamburi. But this Subaram still didn't accept this truth regarding the Jamburi, meaning the hell. Then this Santo actually not, they were not speaking, but Maharaj himself were speaking to, uh, speaking through this Santo. And that's why only because of Maharaj's desire this Sobaram he got a Samadhi and this time Maharaj took, uh, Maharaj took him into Jamburi there Jamdus there run towards him and they just starting uh, they just started to beat him then Sobaram said why are you beating me then all those Jamduts, uh, they say, you many times hurt the devotees of Bhagavan Swami and that's why we are beating you. You many times speak very, very bad words to your brothers only because they were satsangi, they were devotees of Bhagavan Swami uh, So when he was speaking, sorry, sorry, I will not do the same thing again. I will not make such kind of mistakes. I don't know about this kind of pain. That's why. After some times, as Santo have compensation for that, that's why. Because of Santo's wish, as Santo touched the body of Sobaram, he came back from Samadhi. And after coming back, coming back from Samadhi, he explained into the Sabad the, all the other devotees that what was happened to him in the Samadhi and he asked for forgiveness not only to Santo but also his brothers and all the other devotees after that as he said sorry to all those devotees and Santo Santo said it's okay now as Santo realized that the Sobaram really had pain as he had pain all he had given pain to all these devotees especially his brothers and that's why Santo said it's okay now sat here in front of us and chant Swami Narayan Swami Narayan Swami Narayan as Sobaram just he was starting to chant Swami Narayan Swami Narayan then after a few minutes he again got a samadhi. But this time, he was not in a jampuri, but this time he was in a front of Bhagwan Swaminarayan in Divine Aksardha. There, he enjoyed the darshan of Maharaj amidst the Divine Light, amidst the uh, Divine uh, Mass of Light. He not only have darshan of Maharaj, but also countless millions of muktas surrounded to this divine form of Maharaj. After getting this darshan, divine darshan, he enjoyed for many times, for many hours after that, he came back from Samadhi and he also again explained to this divine pleasure he had experienced and about this divine darshan he did in Akshardham 
to all those devotees. And he enjoyed this satsang too much. In this way, this Sobaram became a devotee of Bhagavan Swami Narayan. Now, the third incident also happened in the same Buranpur city. There, there was a devotee by the name of Naranj, but actually he was not a first devotee, but just as here in USA, there were many, many Indian families migrated from India to US only to earn some dollars. In the same way, Narayanji, he was a Brahmin. He was originally lived in Gujarat, but for earning some more money, he went there into Buranpur and sat there. But there in Buranpur, he came in a contact of Bhagwan Swaminarayan's devotees. And with this association, day to day, uh, day to day company of Bhagwan Swaminarayan's follower, he also accepted uh, refuge and religion of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. After accepting Bhagwan Swaminarayan's divine religion, he also follow each and every commands prescribed in the six apatri as well as he had listened from the devotees and in this way he become a staunch devotee of Bhagavan Swaminarayan when the time came meaning the last time came of his body so Bhagavan Swaminarayan divinely came there to take him into his Akshardham and this Narayanji he was a Brahmin. He reached into Divana Aksardam. But he had a little his son. His name his name was Hariram. As he was a child and his father was not present on this earth. He was in Aksardam. Meaning uh, Hariram's father Narayanji he died. After some times, as Hariram was alone and he was merely a child, so he also passing his days to playing with the other kids and in this way, but Bhagwan Swaminarayan himself took care of this Hariram. Bhagwan Swaminarayan divinely gave him some power that as Naranji was become a stones duty of Bhagwan Swaminarayan in the same way Hariram was also following each and every commands of Maharaj and only because of Maharaj's grace this Hariram he got a position of Samadhi so whenever he desired to go to meet Maharaj he just sat down closed his eyes and just remember Maharaj's divine form and he was after a few minutes not in his body but into Divine Aksardam. So he every day used to go into Aksardam and enjoy their Divine Darshan and Divine Talks of Maharaj. Once he met his father Narayanji there in Aksardam. Then after coming back on this earth from Samadhi this Hariram, he explained to all the other satsangi as well as some dhan believers, meaning kusangis. He explained to all that I got a samadhi, I have darshan of Maharaj in Aksardam, I also meet my father there in Aksardam. Those who were the devotees of Bhagwan Swaminarayan and they knew as a devotee that Bhagwan Swaminarayan has this much power that he can do anything and he can do everything. That's why they believe that this merely a child, he can go into Aksarda. But those who are non-believers, they did not accept that this child can get a, even a Samadhi and he can go into Aksarda. So the, those group of non-believers, they ask anything as a proof. So Hariram said, I am ready to give you proof whatever you 
want then those uh, two brothers uh, Vyankatram and Jnaneswar these two brothers they were non-believer they did not they did not accept the truth meaning uh, talks about this Samadhi and Aksardam and as Hariram met his father in Aksardam they did not believe that's why they ask one thing one question to this Hariram if you are true that you said you go every day to Aksardam and you meet your father then we only believe this is truth we have one question we have one uh, we have one incident and we only three people know about this incident we two brothers and your father so now you go into Aksardam there you meet your father and ask your father this question that this time after uh, before these much years where we go and for what we go and what specially happened there then Hariram said for meditation he remembered Bhagwan Swaminarayan he chanting Bhagwan Swaminarayan's holy name and after a few minutes he went into Aksarda now in the Samadhi he enjoyed first Maharaj Darshan and he requested Maharaj Maharaj I have this question so give me permission to meet my father and after granting permission from Maharaj he met his father and he asked the, this question that your friend Venkatram and Gnaneswar they both asked this question that be, uh, before these much years on this particular day you all three people went in, partic uh, in which village and why, are, why were you going there and what happened when you came back to our village then Narayanji explained to his son Harina that we all th th three people we actually before this much year we uh, we, are, we were going to the another village by the name of Badalpur there there we go only uh, for uh, eating some green roasted wheat and after uh, when we came back to our home in the way there were some bill make, meaning some uh, red Indians they met us and as they have one or clothes and they were without clothes so uh, but we have nothing else and that's why they first stop us in the way and they uh, they remove our all clothes and they made us like them without clothes so this incident only we three persons we know about this incident now Hariram getting this information from his father he came back to his body and after coming back from Samadhi he explained this story to this Gnaneswar and his brother Venkatram and they both even though they were non-believer now after listening this incident they both accept that now Hariram is a true and he was a true deity of Bhagwan Swamin and your Bhagwan is also true he in this way they both become a deity of Bhagwan Swaminarayan in this way those who are non-believers they become a deity of Bhagwan Swaminarayan when they realize such kind of divinity and in this way Nishkurana Swami said in our satsang Maharaj every time ready and even he protected his devotees in such kind of situation he said pade pade kare hari sahai meaning 
in each and every second, each in each and every moment, Bhagwan Swaminarayan is forever with us, and He forever remain in the help of us. Many times we realize that this help or this easiness given to me by Maharaj sometimes we don't feel, we don't experience that Maharaj did for us or he is doing for us. So in this uh, by listening this incident and with the words of Niskuran and Swami we should try to uh, realize that everything happened good in our life that is all only because of Maharaj he is forever with us and he is protecting us he is forever remain with us to protect ourselves from all kinds of problems and questions and our situations. In this way, Niskuran Swami concluded here 152 chapter of Bhakta Chintamani. Sri Ganashyam Maharajani Jai Sri Patim Sri Dharam Sarvadevishwaram Bhakti Dharmatma Jam Vasudevam Hare Madhavam Keshavam Kamadam Karanam Swami Narayanam Nilakantham Bhaji Sri Ganashyam Maharajani Jai